I'll just say right away that I know professional sports, at the end of the day, aren't all that important. Right? We can probably agree on that. Uh, it's not the be-all, end-all. We know that probably too much money is spent, first of all, on salaries and, and, and time and money spent on professional sports. And we know there's problems. We know, you know some of the injuries involved in different sports, and it's an issue. But can I say when, when you are a fan of those sports and your team actually wins it all, it's an amazing feeling to have your team win the real, the final championship, you can't beat that. And okay, in Minnesota, you realize, I'm not talking about football here, right? Um, and I know the, the Minnesota Lynx have actually done this, but I, I, never, I never really got into that uh, WNBA. What I'm thinking of when I think of this, I go right back to the Minnesota Twins, right? When, when as a fan, for me as a kid, 1987 and 1991, they did it. Right, where it wasn't just, well, they seem pretty good this year, we'll see how it goes, but they actually won the championship, right? The World Series victory, you know, this is one of the pictures, you know, just seeing some of these players uh, and, and, you know, what the uniforms looked like back then, it just, for me anyway, it takes me, takes me back uh, to, the, to these victories. Like, I, you can say what at bat that was, right, when this picture uh, of Kirby Puckett, you know, is taken, uh, or, or the parades, you know, how it was more than just the team that celebrated, but the whole, the whole city. Now, I didn't go to the parade, but that would have been cool. Uh, but that, the, that the, you know, the city and the fans were able to be a part of the victory. Because even though, you know, the, the people in the Twin Cities area or Minnesota, whoever was a Twins fan then, it's not like they played in the games. Right? They just watched, right? And you could argue well, how much the Homer Hankey, you know, contributed to victories for the Twins. But for the most part... The players did it, right? And the players are the ones, you know, they got the fancy rings when it was done. They probably got the salary bump from winning the World Series. But as the fans, we could say that, all right, you know, we felt like that was our victory also. And in the same way today, we're talking about Jesus' victory. And it's interesting when you think about it how Jesus' victory is something way more important than a sporting event or some sort of, you know, professional sports, or where Jesus wasn't playing a game, right? He was in a struggle, a literal life and death struggle for our eternal souls, right? And it's one of those things where, where we know that's true, but, but to really think about Jesus really struggled for this, and he won. And, and he won the ultimate victory, and because he did that, we get to share in that victory too. And, and share in it even better than, you know, sharing with, a, with your favorite team winning the championship. Jesus sharing the victory means that we get the good stuff that he won for us, right? Where in a, in a sense, we do get the ring, uh, but, but not a ring, a crown, right? The crown of life that Jesus won for us. And, and so today, what I really want us to do is get a chance to think about that and really rejoice that we do get a chance to realize that, that his victory is ours, and that it really means something for us. And to do that, we're going to look at a, a section of God's Word from the book of Romans. And so Romans is, is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a, the church in Rome, so it's written to the Romans. And it's, this little section, I think, does a good job of kind of bridging the gap between our two other readings today. So we had Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the devil tempting them and they gave in. And then we have Jesus in the wilderness with the devil tempting him, and he didn't give in. And so now, in this reading, we get a chance, we look at Adam and we look at Jesus, we look at the results of both of them, and, and what it really means for us. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll make sense as we go on, because this first verse, uh, and I'll sort of warn you about this, this text, it's wordy. It's got a lot of, not, not that you can't understand it, but it's almost like a tongue twister sometimes, and there's, they throw a lot of words in there. But it's worth the effort, uh, because we really get to see what our God has done for us. So this first verse, right off the bat, tells us, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned. Now, it's, just, it's almost just a fraction of a sentence there. He doesn't even have like a main part of the sentence. But, but already there, he's, he's packing a lot of hand a lot in there to what we need to know that he's getting at. So he says, sin entered the world through one man. 
So the thing about that, that's back to our first reading, right? So we have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and this part's kind of laying the blame on Adam here. Yeah, there, it was both Adam and Eve there, but he's saying that Adam in the Garden broke God's command, right? He, he ate uh, of, from the tree that God had commanded him not to eat from. So that's how sin entered the world. Um, it, it happened right there. But, and it was more than just, oh, he messed up once, no big deal. Death through sin. So sin entered the world through one man, and death entered the world through sin. So before Adam and Eve had, had eaten from the fruit, the, the, the plan was, God had created the world, they were going to live forever. In fact, one of the other trees in the garden was the tree of life, and they were going to eat that, and they would, they would live forever, and then everyone would live forever. Death wasn't part of the plan. But now, because there's sin, now death has come to the world too. And it didn't just come to Adam and Eve who broke, the, who broke that command, but death came to all people because all sinned, right? It's like how things get passed down from one generation to the next. Um, you know, we, we, you can say that, oh, you know, this, this one child, well, you have your dad's eyes or you have your mom's hair or something like that. But we have our, our mom and dad, even Adam, mom and dad's, we have their sin, right? It's been passed down ever since then and because of that, uh, death has also been passed down, right? So that's why there's funerals, and that's why, that's why people don't live forever in this world, is because of that sin. So obviously that's a problem, um, and, and this sort of gets into why we needed Jesus to begin with. And we're reminded here that our first main point today is that his victory reverses Adam's defeat, okay? You know, defeats and victories, again, are, are very much a part of, of our life, and Again, you think of sports with that. But, you know, I mentioned the Twins winning the World Series and how the people, the fans could feel like, oh, yes, that's my victory. But it wasn't so long ago, 2016, Twins lost 103 games. All right, that's a lot of losses. And that was not one. And a fan could take that personally, too, and say, feel like, oh, yeah, we're, this is not our year, right? But Adam's defeat is worse, right? Because he was defeated in this way, because he sinned, that's not just, oh, I feel bad about it. That's just, that brings death, right? That brings all the problems that we have in our lives and in the world. That's where they come from. And I don't say this to, to blame Adam, like, oh, if he just hadn't done that, because those sins that we commit, are, they're still our fault. They're, they're still us sinning. And it's just a reminder that we're in a bad situation, and this defeat isn't just, it's not just one of those things where, well, he has to make it sound bad. I mean, this is really bad. Defeat that leads to death and hell is really what we're talking about here. And then these next couple of verses sort of, they sort of answer a question that, that I didn't have. Uh, it wasn't a question that I would have asked, but it's kind of interesting. These verses are kind of getting at, you know, God had commanded in the Garden of Eden, don't eat from the tree. But then he didn't really command stuff until many, many years later when Moses got the Ten Commandments. So someone might wonder, well, what about all the people in between? If they didn't, you know, if Adam and Eve's kids, they didn't get a chance to eat from the wrong tree, and they never got the Ten Commandments, so were they in a bad situation too? And these verses kind of answer that. It says, to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. So it's saying that, yeah, there wasn't, the Ten Commandments weren't there yet for a while, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter because death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. They were still sinful, right? People were still sinful during that time, and so people still died, and so that's still what we have today. That's still what we're dealing with. Uh, but, so now we get into the good news part of this. Is that, okay, we know the sin is a defeat, and so now how does Jesus' victory fit in for us? And the first way it fits in is how it's given to us, and that's, it comes as a gift. So his victory comes as a gift to us. And that's kind of a weird way to think of a victory as a gift. Um, although you could imagine someone saying that, like, even for my example with the Twins, I mean, it's possible that a Twins player from those World Series winning teams could say, all right, winning the series this year is a gift to the fans, someone might say. And you could sort of understand that. Like, okay, so the fans got to experience a good season and, and they got to experience a championship. So 
So in a way, that, that makes sense. But Jesus, of course, takes his victory as a gift to a whole different level. And, and the next several passages really talk about that. So he says, But the gift is not like the trespass. For if many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Hey, again, this sounds sort of tongue twistery, but stick with it. Uh, so he's saying that Jesus' victory is the gift and the trespass, that's another word for sin, right? The sin is Adam's sin. So, okay, the many died by the trespass of the one man. So that's talking about death came to the world because Adam sinned. But God's grace and the gift came by the grace of the one man, the other one man, Jesus. So it's different because what happened to Adam wasn't a gift. It was what Adam deserved and what we deserve because of sin. There's another passage in Romans that talk about, talks about that. The wages of sin is death in Romans 6. Usually when we talk about wages, that, that's another word for like your paycheck is your wages. So wages aren't a gift, right? If you, if someone, okay, here's your paycheck. Like someone doesn't hand you a paycheck and say, you know what, around the office we, we kind of got together and we just, we just really appreciate it. We just think you're great. And so we decided out of the goodness of our hearts to give you a paycheck. No, that's not why someone pays you. You get paid for what you did, what you worked. If you're an hourly wage, it's the number of hours times the hourly pay. That's what's on the check, you know, minus the taxes or whatever. Or it's whatever your agreed upon salary is. They're not, it's not a gift. It's your wages. They're very different. It's what you earned. For us, when we're talking about Jesus' victory, thank God it's not about what we earned. Because if it's what we earned, well, we already heard what we earned. What we earned is death. Sin earns death. That's what we'd earn. That would be our, our paycheck, so to speak, and it's not a good one. But what Jesus gives us is a gift, and the, the verses that follow continue on this theme. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Again, so by one sin, you know, Adam and Eve eat the, eat the fruit, and that one sin is enough to set in motion all this bad stuff, all this death and, and all these other things, but Jesus' gift comes after many sins. I mean, all of us sin every day. We can't even keep track of all our sins. All these many sins, and Jesus' gift comes, and it covers over all of that, it says, and brought justification. Now, it's a long word with a lot of syllables, but it's an important word in the Bible because it means a courtroom verdict. Like when they, they read the verdict, and you know, we find the defendant not guilty. That's what this justification means in that God finds us not guilty of our sins. Does that mean we didn't do the sins? No, quite the opposite. We did them. We did them all. But Jesus, because he's giving us his victory over sin, because his death on the cross paid the price, because he rose from the dead and paid for all those sins, now God can look at us, not as guilty people, but, oh, I'll let you slide this once. No, he doesn't let anyone slide. But Jesus already paid it. So we have a not guilty verdict now because of what Jesus did, and it's given to us as a gift. Right? And then, because after that, um, it, it sort of rewords it in a different way about this gift. Uh, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Again, that's a big sentence. But, but look what it's talking about. Adam sinned, and now death comes to everybody. Jesus didn't sin. In fact, he gave us the gift of what he did. And now, because of him, by faith, this gift of life comes to everybody. And not only that, but the gift of righteousness comes to everyone. Again, righteousness is another word for perfection. So it's like saying that God looks at us and he doesn't see what we see. You know, we see all too well, sometimes we see our defeats and how we didn't live up to do the right thing. You know, we're really good at remembering the times we messed up. Like you can probably remember embarrassing moments and things, or things that you said that you immediately wish you could, 
you know, take back and not say. And we can, you know, remember those times vividly. But God, he doesn't treat us according to those things. Because of Jesus and because of faith, he sees us as righteous and perfect. And again, it's not because we earned it. We, we didn't do the least thing of earning it. But it's a gift from Jesus that now God sees us as his perfect son or daughter. We're his perfect child because of what Jesus did for us. And not only that, but this is a gift that really lasts. And that's really kind of the ending parts of this, that, that his victory brings us results. And, and they're, really, they're really lasting results from this. I mean, because that's, that's something that we couldn't get through my example of a sports victory. All right, all right, it's cool that the Twins won the World Series in 1987. Right? I celebrated, you know, when that happened. But guess what? 1988, they, they did pretty good, but they didn't win. They lost, uh, and they were out of it. So it didn't really last. Yeah, you can still go and see the trophy, um, or you can, you know, you can look at the old pictures, but they're not the champions anymore after that. They're not the champions now. Um, Whereas Jesus, he, when he comes with his gift and his victory, that has lasting results that mean something for us right now. And the passages really show this to us. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. So it talks about the results. Both of these say resulted in. But here it says it's the one righteous act uh, there's a little question of what this could be referring to. It could be referring to the, the act of Jesus dying on the cross or the act of him rising or maybe even his whole ministry, his whole life and death and resurrection. Maybe all of it together is called one righteous act. But, but regardless, the point is, is pretty clear that what Jesus did resulted in justification in life for all people. That results is something that continues. And that means that we have that not guilty verdict. We don't lose it the next time we sin. It's not like when you become a Christian, but then the next time you sin, oh, now you have to start over and now you have to make up for it or something like that. No. Thank God that Jesus, he covers over us with his not guilty verdict for our entire lives and we get to live in that verdict. And, and yes, it has something to do with heaven and we get eternal life, but it's not just someday in heaven where we have this. We have it now. Right? We have life with him now. It's going to be better in heaven but even now, we're his victorious people, even when it doesn't always look at, like it on the outside. And he really, he, he mentions that again in the, in the last verse of our text as he sort of sums it up. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. And again, by faith, that's us. Are we sinners? Well, in one sense, yeah, we are. We confessed it already. We, we, we acknowledged it. But at the same time, we know that's not really who we are. Who we are, our true identity, comes from what Jesus has done for us. It comes from the, the verdict that he put on us. It, it comes from that righteousness that, that we didn't earn, that we could have never lived up to, but that God says through faith and what Jesus has done, now that's who you are. That's, that's what it means that his victory is ours. And yeah, I know that as we think about this, yeah, it's spring training, and okay, the Twins look okay this year. Uh, on paper, anyway, they should do pretty well, but I'm not quite ready to award them world championship status for this year yet. We'll have to see how it goes. But for us, right, when it comes to the way more important thing of our life and eternity, guess what? We've already won. Jesus won it for us. He gives us what he has accomplished his righteousness, his not guilty verdict, that is over us now, and we're going to live in that now and forever because his victory is ours. Amen. We'll continue then by...